ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Welcome into the Wednesday, June 1st edition. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. We're going to open up that phone line for you at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Text line is open as well, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Coming up today on the program, we're going to be speaking with a member of the Charleston Dirty Birds we're going to be speaking to upper management today. Uh, that's what I, I've been told. That's the direction I've gotten, upper management. So we're going to catch up. We usually do that once a week here on Wednesdays. So we've got our, our weekly call in from the Charleston Dirty Birds. We'll talk about what's happening with the birds, schedule, all the events that are coming up in the capital city. So I'm looking forward to that coming up tomorrow on the program because we got volleyball to talk about. Ari Agnes is going to join me. We're going to catch up with her, talk about the recruiting class. We're going to also talk about the schedule that just came out. We'll get into the details of that a little bit later on, but we're starting to get these schedules now for what life is going to look like in the Sun Belt for these teams. I'm hoping we get basketball sooner than later. I'm sure it's going to be a little while before we get basketball. Obviously, we've got a ways to go, but we're starting to get some of these schedules. So I thought it'd be a good time to have Ari come on the program. So she said she could do tomorrow. We're going to do tomorrow. Speaking of things that are happening, we've got a lot of women's basketball news to get into. We'll do that in some detail this hour. But next week, Tony Kemper, he's on the road right now, so he can't do the show today or the rest of the week, but we're going to get him on Sometime early next week to talk about recruiting, finishing, I believe finishing, at least at the moment, recruiting for him. Current needs, current needs. And, of course, we'll uh, get into some staff additions for him. And uh, hopefully we can uh, get into some staff additions for the uh, Thundering Herd on the men's side as well next week. So uh, we've got a lot coming up, hopefully, these next couple of weeks. So I'm looking forward to doing that with you. And, of course, I'm looking forward to talking and hearing from you. And you can do that again. The text line is open, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. And, of course, the phone line is open as well at 877-420-TALK. That's 877-420-8255. I know I give you guys a lot of phone numbers, but I keep telling you, program them in your phone. Write them down, program them in your phone so you got them so you can just shoot off a quick text. And, of course, if text isn't your thing, we do it the old-fashioned way with Twitter. I'm at Paul Swan on Twitter. I'll see your comments, and I'll try to respond to them as I get them. So we got a lot to get into today. Of course, the NBA Finals are coming up, and we're going to have that for you right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I believe we're going to have the majority of the of the NBA Final. So that's coming up. I'm looking forward to a Golden State taking on Boston. I'm going to have to go with Golden State. I'm not a Celtics fan. I don't mean that in a bad way. I just always was a Lakers fan. So I was a Lakers fan growing up. And that was before I really knew why I was a Lakers fan because, you know, the Lakers were popular and, you know, Magic Johnson. But I always uh, respected it and thought highly of Larry Bird. I thought the Lakers versus Celtics were uh, the thing uh, that every kid should have growing up, like as far as a big rivalry to get into. I even played, it was on the Sega Genesis, uh, Lakers versus Celtics, which was awesome. Because at the time, you know, with those, I think it was an 8-bit graphics still here. Was it 8-bit? Or we were 16-bit at that point. I can't remember my bits. But Lakers versus Celtics, you know, you could do a particular keystroke move. And you could do like a finishing move. It was it was hyper realistic at the time. I mean, you had the parquet on the court when you. I mean, each court was different. So when you played as the Celtics, you had the parquet. It was beautiful. It was wonderful for a kid, anyway. I mean, after all, this is me coming from a double dribble, where I take New York. I was always New York on double dribble because I could just do the three point shot, and. This was back in the day before we had online. This is way before we had any of these services. But you actually had to play the kids in the neighborhood. You actually had to be in someone's living room to play against somebody. And this is a true story. I'm not embellishing here. I had a a kid 
He's younger than me, but he talked a lot of trash for a, for a little little one there. I mean, he 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 talked a lot of trash. He was going to destroy me in double dribble. He was going to destroy me, right? Nobody destroyed me in double dribble. Nobody. If uh, there was an online league for double dribble, I would be a famous Twitch star by now because I that was my game, double dribble. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to take that challenge. And I crushed that kid 100 to nothing at halftime, and he rage quit and went home. True story. Speaking of video games, uh, that leads me into where we're at with Madden 23. The cover has been revealed today, and John Madden's going to be on the cover. And again, I don't know what your feelings are if you're a, a younger member of the audience, if you're someone that still plays Madden, but before we had cover athletes, it was Madden on the cover. It was John Madden football before it became Madden, Madden, whatever the year was. It was John Madden football. And it was it was fun then. The old games were still, you know, to this day, some of the best. I mean, it might not be hyper-realistic. The physics might not be there, but it was fun. And so... For the first time since year 2000, John Madden's going to be on the cover. Of course, if you um, if you remember, he passed away on December 28th of last year. So I think that's fitting. Yeah, I was wondering how they're going to handle this. I mean, will it be Madden for years to come? I mean, will EA always keep the brand Madden? I mean, will there be a time where EA drops the brand of Madden? I don't know if they, I don't know if that's the one brand. I don't know if you can do that. You know, maybe 20, 30 years will, you know, will people still know who Madden is? Other, I mean, because a lot of people don't know who Madden is now, other than that's the name of the video game. They kind of have an idea, but they don't, you know, football fans know. Madden, hey, I got to get the latest copy of Madden. So yeah, I think we all have to go out and get the latest copy of Madden. You know, it's like uh, Tiger Wood Golf. They dropped Tiger Wood. It's like PGA Golf. FIFA, they dropped that. EA's dropping FIFA because they didn't want to pay a billion for the license. One billion. That's one and a B. One billion for the four letters, FIFA. And other than the World Cup aspect of the FIFA license, EA's got everything licensed. All the teams, the leagues, uh, you know, there, there are a few stragglers out there, but yeah, they don't think that they uh, are going to lose anything with not having that branding. I think with the Madden, though, you, you lose something because it's Madden. It's part, of our, it's part of the culture, Madden football. I mean, as kids, we grew up playing Madden. Well, some of us did as kids growing up. Some of you did. Probably some of you didn't. Some of you right now are probably like, yeah, quit talking about video games. Also yelling at me to get off your lawn. I get it. I understand. Uh, so hey, that's exciting to me. I, 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 think, um, I think that's fitting just because John Madden meant a lot. I mean, not just as a football coach, as a human being, as a broadcaster. He was somebody that loved football. So you you point to John Madden, like, hey, there, that's a guy. You know, just be full of life like that guy. I wish I had like half the life he had. Now, I'm not talking about his wealth and fame. I mean, sure, I would love to have some of that too. But I'm just talking about the passion for life and the way he lived life. And I just wish I had half of that energy. I mean, I, I would be better for it. We're going to talk about the Charleston Dirty Birds when we continue. We will later on take your phone calls and texts. we got a lot to get into today. A lot of happenings for the Thundering Herd, staff additions, schedule updates, all of that across the spectrum. We'll do all of that with you on this edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to this Wednesday, June 1st edition, first day of June. We're excited to talk a little baseball now with the president of the Charleston Dirty Birds, Chuck Domino. He's with us now. We haven't talked in a while, Chuck. Good to talk to you, and yeah. uh, we're excited. Yeah. We're excited to talk a little bit about what's yeah. happening with the Dirty Birds here pretty soon. Um, because when I talk to Lindsay, we love talking about the mega fireworks. I mean, I think that's like the first and fifth thing we talk about, fireworks always. Yeah. Well, we have one of the better fireworks shows around. 
That's for sure. Yes, yes, you do. Uh, definitely. And I can't wait to see uh, what you've got in store for us uh, coming up this month. It's a new month, so that means – Obviously, new promotions for the Dirty Birds, but uh, since it's been a, a while since I've had a chance to talk to you, just how are things going so far as far as the fans finally taking to the new name, the new branding, the new vibe that's going on for Charleston baseball? Did you find that it took a little while before fans got used to all the changes, or were they just right ready to go and jump right in with you? I think they, for the most part, they were ready to jump in right with it. You're always going to have, you know, some skeptics and some people that question, uh, you know, the decisions you make, and that's in any business. But <clears throat> I think that people have really come around to the new name. Uh, we uh, made a made a habit of playing for the first uh, month before the game, the uh, genesis of the name, uh, a video on the board, and I think people, you know better understand the thought process behind the name now and uh the, the logo's great the colors are great uh if people vote with their pocketbooks like a lot of uh people say uh then they like it because our merchandise sales are probably pretty much even through uh through the first uh 12 or 13 games this year they're almost even with last year uh, West Virginia Power merchandise sells through about 50 games. So uh, that's a good sign. Are you finding it's a bigger hit with the kids, or is it more a mix with the kids, the parents? Uh, you find the p- parents are maybe just liking the logo a lot more? Because that's the charm of minor league sports. It's it's the la- logo, it's the branding. I mean, if you don't have a good minor league logo, I mean, you really don't have anything. You could be the winningest team in minor league baseball. If your logo is no good, nobody cares, right? Well, well, Paul, I was uh, I was intimately involved with choosing uh, some of the top logos in the game, uh, the flying squirrels, the yard goats, the trash pandas, the rubber ducks, uh, to just name a few, and uh, and so I know the importance of a, a good name and a good logo in minor league baseball. So that's why I really wanted to do something different, uh, a little more exciting, a little more kid friendly. If you uh, notice, every one of those names is a two part name, and uh, the second part is some type of animal, and the first part is the description of the animal. Uh, that's my kind of my go-to when I go for a new name of a team, and and that model seems to be working. And it and it and and to answer your original question, the kids love it for sure, hundred percent. I think West Virginia Power and just the WV, uh, very similar to West Virginia University, probably too similar to West Virginia University. Um, I think we needed to have our own identity. Clearly, what would be our own identity. And uh, the kids love it. But adults, I mean, you, you, you come to a game and you walk around and you see there's just as many, uh, just as high percentage of adults as there are kids wearing something with the uh, Dirty Birds logo on it. Our hats, uh, and specifically, have been uh, really well received. Chuck Domino joining me, the president of the Charleston Dirty Birds. And I agree with you on the identity portion. It's Charles. Sure, people in Huntington, people in Ohio, Kentucky, and our tri-state area, we can all go to the game. But that's Charleston's baseball team. It's for all of us, but it's still Charleston's baseball team. And it's easier to identify as Charleston Dirty Birds than West Virginia Dirty Birds. So I think you're spot on with that identity. You're right, and I've been in baseball. This is my 40th year, and I was uh, in affiliated baseball for 38 years. And to be honest with you, for all those years that the West Virginia Power and the West Virginia Black Bears were both in existence, I could never keep track, and I could never remember which one was in Morgantown and which one was in Charleston. So, uh, and I think it's clear that uh, I think people should be proud of the home t- hometown their team plays in. Uh, the players should be proud to say they once played in Charleston, West Virginia. Uh, and, you know, just like the Charleston Charlies and the Alley Cats and the Wheelers before them, you know, it, it was Charleston. So, uh, you know, I'm not, I don't want to knock the people that made the decision to be West Virginia Power at the time. Uh, they thought they were doing the right thing, but uh, I'm glad we changed back. My guest is the president of the Charleston Dirty Birds, Chuck Domino, and I know the birds are our way right now, so there's no rest, however. you got to get ready for the next homestand, and, and there's a lot of exciting things happening for the homestand. 
Have you been finding it challenging to make sure that there's something fresh and different every time? I know that's a yearly challenge for minor league baseball, but still, you, know, you got to keep it fresh. You got to keep it fun. You got to have your mainstays like the mega blast fireworks. But what's you think been the most well, exciting promotion so far? What's what's really getting the fans responding to Dirty Birds baseball on a given night? Well, you know everything this year. You know, knock on wood, seems to be working, and and maybe it's because it, the new name has helped. But uh, mainly, I think it's COVID is you know knock on wood again is behind us, and people are starting to get out, and it was just a lot of pent up um, a- energy that they wanted to get out and, and have fun with their uh, family in, in an outdoor setting, and uh, so we're about. God, we're almost double our attendance on a per game average for the same amount of games this year as last year. Uh, we did change a few things up. Tuesday night, we have a, a baseball bingo, uh, half price beer and half price hot dogs. Uh, the baseball bingo, people to come out and, and uh, play and have a lot of fun with it. Uh, it's every every thing that happens, whether it's us or our opponents. Uh, corresponds to a bingo number, and they have bingo cards, and we give out prizes. The first ten people to win, and then bingo is over. Uh, kind of along that same theme on Wednesday nights is winning scratch off Wednesdays. We have a few sponsors that uh, give out prizes, but everybody's a winner. Everybody walks through, gets a scratch off card. And if you don't win something from one of our three sponsors, you're winning something at the ballpark, whether it's a free hot dog, a free soda, or a free popcorn. So. Um, there's an incentive to come out every Wednesday. Thursday night, well, we got rid of We dropped the Thirsty Thursday tag because everybody's doing Thirsty Thursdays and everybody has different deals on Thirsty Thursdays. So we decided we're just going to call it what it is, Dollar Beer Night. And um, that's coming up uh, this next Thursday and you know, every Thursday. And we also wear our Charlie's uniform on Thursday nights as well. And then Fridays, Paul, have really been really – been taken off because we brought giveaways back. We couldn't get giveaways last year because of uh, COVID and supply chain and, uh, and everybody being behind. So we were able to, to order giveaways this year. And this Friday, coming Friday, June 10th, is a Hawaiian T-shirt for the first 1,000 fans. And it's it's a really good look at Hawaiian, uh, I shouldn't say T-shirt, a Hawaiian shirt, button-down shirt. And then every Friday is also Furry Friend Friday. Uh, so you can bring out your pets. Any pet, not just dogs. We've got dogs, cats. We've had hamsters. We've had, you know, different types of uh, furry friends. Saturday, of course, Mega Blast Fireworks, always popular, as you mentioned before. And on Sunday, it'll be uh, the player photo giveaway that we're doing every Sunday this year. We pick a different player, and we give out an 8.5 by 11 glossy color pre-autograph photo, and it'll be Anthony Seymour, our star center fielder, has had a great year this year. So we're jam-packed this next homestand. But like you said, we're jam-packed every every game the rest of the year. We have something going on. There's no game where it's just playing baseball. Um, you know, we have a lot of good baseball fans that want to just see playing baseball, but we have a lot of other people that just want to come out for all the other antics and giveaways and fireworks that we uh, provide. My guest is the president of the Charleston Dirty Birds, Chuck Domino and yeah, I, I mentioned to Lindsay a couple weeks ago that she better save me a, a camo hat. So uh, could you put a word in for me? Make sure. Cause well, you, you, they, they, I hope she did because we already gave them away. So I hope she uh, she saved one for you. Oh. Well, I guess a Hawaiian sure shirt would be good. Yeah, I, I'll take a Hawaiian shirt if I don't get the hat. Cause, I'll tell you what. I don't know if they would go good together, <laughs> but they're, they're very nice separately. I can tell you that. Yeah, I, I could – you know what? You're right. I don't think I'll pull the camo hat and the Hawaiian shirt, but uh, yeah, you could come out with a, a pretty nice wardrobe here with all the giveaways you're doing because you got the hat, you got the shirt. I'm sure you'll have you know some other per uh, item, some merch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sure jerseys are coming soon. If not, you know this season later. Yeah, you yep. you've got so much going on. It's um, it's got to be ex- it's fun, but it's got to be exhausting as well, just to make sure that there's something. Every month, every homestand, just to to be different, not to be different for different sake, but hey, let's what's what can we do next? What can we do that's fun that the fans would would like to get into? Yeah, 
you know, we also, you're right. We're always also, we're always brainstorming and trying to see, not, not doing just the nightly promotions, but the things in the game itself. And we came up with a very uh, cool promotion recently that uh, we were the only team to ever do it, I think, in the history of baseball. And now uh, four or five teams have already said they're going to steal our idea. We have a helium half inning where our public address announcer inhales helium before he announces the batters. And uh, it's funny sounding, and it's just just kind of minor league baseball-esque. And uh, a lot of other minor league teams now, I'm gonna, if you watch, they're going to start doing it. But uh, it started in Charleston, West Virginia with the Dirty Birds. <laughs> Remember that when almost everybody starts doing it in a, in a few years from now. I got I got an idea. You want to you want to take it to the next level? Ha, have the umpire do the helium when they call the balls and strikes. <laughs> that's that's good. I don't know why I can talk them into it, but that's good. Oh come on, Chuck! I think you can do it. I mean, it's minor league baseball. They know it's supposed to be fun as well. They've got to do a, a serious job. They've got to call it right down the line, but. It doesn't mean they have to have that stern voice. They can have uh, the helium voice as well. I think that would endear the fans to the ump. <laughs> I'll bring it up to them, Paul. All right. I want slight credit, just a little bit, okay? I want a little little piece of that action if, if you can pull it off. My guest is the president of the Charleston Dirty Birds, Chuck Domino. The promotions are coming up. And, of course, you can find out more about all of the promotions uh, on the website. You've got – A lot of things that I'm sure uh, fans are looking forward to. The Father's Day Grill Spatula sounds like it's going to be a fun one for all those fathers out there. I mean, that sounds like something a lot of people would probably want to get to the ballpark and get their hands on. Very very sturdy. I've seen it. It's very sturdy. Yep. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff. We got Diamond Dig coming up later in the year. We did that one last year. Youth Hat Giveaway. Uh, Mothman night where we're wearing the Mothman jerseys. Uh, you know, that's very popular around here. In fact, a lot of people wouldn't have thought we should be called the Mothman. Um, so, uh, trucker hat giveaway later in the season. A lot of stuff going on. Uh, and Dollar Beer Thursdays always. Winning Scratch Off Wednesdays always. And Baseball Bingo Tuesdays always. So there's something for everyone. Will the Mothman make an appearance? Uh, I'm not sure whether the Mothman will make an appearance or not, but I don't want to. I don't want to give out any secrets. Okay, fair it's enough. Come so to, it's and, come, to, come to find out. Okay, anticipation. That's that's a, a true promotion wizard right there speaking. Come and find out. The Mothman will show up. Uh, that'd be amazing if you can pull that off. So uh, we'll uh, we'll cross our fingers for you. Uh, anything else going on? Anything else going on, Chuck? That we should know about uh, before uh, we let you go? Uh, uh, well, we're, we're well, we're getting busy right now. The team's on the road, but uh, we're busy as ever because we 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 got the uh, the high school state tournament out of the stadium this weekend. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, weather permitting. Tomorrow looks a little shaky, but uh, Sunday will be the rain date. So it's you know still if it's a nice day out, and you still want to get some baseball in. High quality high school baseball will be at the stadium this weekend. Could you get the announcer there to do the helium for the state tournament? Ah, uh, yes. I'm not. That's not a bad idea. I hadn't thought about that yet, Paul. We haven't had that conversation with them. I don't know how serious they take their high school state tournament. I'm sure they take it serious, but uh, that's not a bad idea. All right. See, I mean, I'm a, I'm a fountain of, I'm a fountain of you're, ideas. You're, you're, you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong business. I mean, if you want to make me an offer, we can talk. I mean, you got an offer for me. I'd be glad to join the staff, Chuck. I mean, you know, all this moonlight, I'll do that on the side with you. I mean, okay, I'm affordable. Talk offline. Yeah, let's do that. I'm affordable. Yeah, sure. Uh, You know, I work in radio. I can use a second line of income here. You know this. I work in radio. (laughs) All right. Chuck, good talking to you. We'll do it again soon. Have fun. I would say enjoy the time off from the team being on the road, but I know better than that. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, and let's hope that uh, we're uh, talking about uh, a lot of fun things on and off the field with the Dirty Birds. Yep. Okay, you got it, Paul. Thank you. That is Chuck Domino, the president of the Charleston Dirty Birds. See, I'm 
lining up a second gig here. I'm just going to be the idea man for the Charleston Dirty Birds or for baseball in Charleston in general. I mean, why not just have at the state baseball tournament, have the announcers and just the helium. That would be fantastic. We should do a show one time where I do the helium. I would want it to be a big deal, though. I want to do an interview. I do the helium. I want to do the interview with the helium. And I want doing the helium either it's got to be Christian Spears, Marshall's athletic director. I want to do a helium interview, him and me, on the helium. If he won't go for it, Charles Huff. You think Huff would go for it, Coach Huff? Go for the, an interview doing the helium? If not, I'm going to go to the two people that never let me down. I'm going to go to Ari Agnes. She would do he- You know what? It's going to be me and Ari Agnes. I'll ask her tomorrow. She's coming on the program tomorrow. And if she won't, I know Tony Kemper will. So we'll do all of it. We'll check. We'll see which Marshall coach would be game. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, probably none of them. Maybe Grassy would. Maybe Grassy would do the uh, do uh, just uh, him and me in studio, uh, helium. Maybe we can get a charity component to this as well. Probably not. We'll figure it out. More coming up. It's the Drive, ESPN ninety four point one at AM nine thirty. This is the Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN ninety four point one FM and AM nine thirty. We're taking your phone calls and texts this hour. Paul Swan, your host for The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. The text line is always open for you, and we do that at 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. And, of course, the phone line always there as well, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. I mentioned we're going to have Ari Agnes on the program tomorrow. One of the reasons why is the schedule came out today. And Marshall's going to host two tournaments and 15 home games. August 26th is when the regular season will begin at the camp. Marshall will play host to the first of its two home tournaments. Of course, the Marshall Invitational will feature South Carolina State, Wright State, and Evansville. The second Marshall tournament, the Marshall Invite, is going to be on the 9th and 10th of September. And the Marshall invite will feature Charleston Southern, Murray State, and Kent State. Non-conference play ends on September 27th. So what does the conference slate hold for the Thundering Herd? Well, let me tell you. You've got Old Dominion. That's going to be the conference game to open it all up on the road against Old Dominion. Then you're going to have Troy, Appalachian State, and Coastal Carolina. Those are going to be the road series. The home series will involve Georgia State, Georgia Southern, James Madison, and Arkansas State. And that'll be the series to end the regular season. I'm glad that Middle Tennessee is on the schedule. Because the herd's going to be on the uh, road for the Miami Invitational. So you're going to have Miami there. You're going to have Middle Tennessee. That's going to be cool. I think that's something you have to do. You know, you got to get involved with a few of these Conference USA schools. It makes sense, like Middle Tennessee, like Western Kentucky, if you can. Um, Miami's hosting a tournament. So, you know, I'm sure they, they will come back. That's good. Good scheduling from the Thundering Herd. So Ari Agnes is going to join us tomorrow. We're going to talk about our recruiting class. We're going to also talk about the schedule. I'm sure she's excited to talk about it, and we'll talk to her on the program tomorrow. Next week, we're going to talk about Marshall women's basketball with Tony Kemper. And, of course, yesterday we briefly told you about Shania Wright played 78 games over four seasons with the Georgetown Hoyas. And she played about 12 and a half minutes, averaged 4.6 points a contest, 2.9 rebounds per game this past season. And she adds to the Thundering Herd, and we'll talk to Tony Kemper about what she brings and what he sees in her. And today we get the news that graduate assistant Maggie Stanley has been elevated to director of basketball operations. She was a student manager in 2018 with the Thundering Herd, and she's worked her way up. 
and she's taking over the position from Rudy Evans, who was promoted to a full-time assistant coach back in April. So Tony Kemper keeping it in the family and also elevating people. So keeping it familiar. I think that's good. Keep some familiar faces. At the same time, you know, he's using the transfer portal. So I think he's doing a, a good job of making – it more of a mix of okay, we got to recruit, but we got to hit the transfer portal. We got to bring some fresh blood in here at the same time. We got to keep some familiar faces on the roster, coaching side, managerial side. Good mix so far. So I'm excited to see what happens. And I'm optimistic. I think the Marshall women's basketball team, which has been really chipping away at it and improving over these last few years, I think the Sun Belt is going to be just fine for Marshall women's basketball. I really do. You, know, you hope that the men can have a, a really good run in the Sun Belt, and you hope that the women can do the same. It's not to say that they couldn't have had that run in Conference USA, but I just feel better about everything in the Sun Belt, just the way the you know, league's organized, the way that it seems like all the schools are a little bit better aligned with each other. I'm sure there are differences, but it just feels like that everything seems a little bit more aligned and organized. It just feels like it's a better league top to bottom. And, of course, that could be just part of me feeling that Conference USA was just, just – it just didn't work out. Yeah, the, the Conference USA of old, the one that Marshall was signed up for, the one that I was happy to see Marshall sign up for, is no longer – it does not exist in any shape or form. It's it's a shell of itself. I mean, the remnants are gone even. So that's not the league. This league, I don't feel like it's going to break up anytime soon. And I don't think that this is a league that feels like, okay, we're just going to be a feeder league here. You know, it's, it's really wanting to be a high-level league. You call it group of five, whatever you want to call it. It feels like it's going to be a league that's striving to be a higher level league, and it feels like the geography is going to play in its favor and the divisions are going to play in the league's favor. So I'm excited for both basketball and, of course, volleyball. We will get your phone calls in and your text. The phone line is 877-420-TALK. The text line, 304-396-TALK. 304-396-8255. Some good news for Marshall softball. A huge honor for Allie Harrell. We'll talk about that when we continue and get you set for the night in sports here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. It's our final segment. Paul Swan, your host. It's June 1st. Welcome back to The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Anybody stay up late last night? It wasn't that late, but you stayed up late last night and watched the first game of the Western Conference Finals. 14 goals. Colorado won 8-6. to six. I'm texting after the game our, our program director, and uh, you know him as uh, Eric on 92.7 and 98.5 The Planet. He's a big Colorado Avalanche fan. So I texted him late last night. Uh, 13 different players scored in that game. Uh, no defense. Goaltenders going out in that game. It just – Gresky was even – because Gresky's on the TNT coverage. So Gresky's like, you know, guys – I mean, this is Mr. Offense here. Like, guys, got to play some defense here eventually. Somebody's going to have to play some defense. You want defense? You got it tonight coming up. Game one of the Eastern Conference Finals, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the defending two-time Stanley Cup champions, taking on the upstart New York Rangers. You know, the Rangers have actually been in the finals several times. This isn't as if this is new for New York Rangers hockey. It's new for this group. I think Chris Kreider is pretty much the, the lone man standing from when the Rangers were making runs before the rebuild. Should be fun one tonight. We've got a goaltending battle in that one. We're going to have that on our sister station, Cat Sports 93.3 and 1340. we got Pirates baseball coming up tonight. The Pirates um, have found a team they can beat, and that's the Dodgers. Pirates have now won three of their last four games. And rookie Tukapita Marcano launched a three-run bomb for the Pirates. His first homer for... Pro baseball, Major League Baseball, pro baseball. I mean, like real pro. Pirates are now 4-1 against the Dodgers. 
uh, Jose Quintana will be on the mound tonight for the Pirates. So looking forward to that. We'll have it for you. It's coming up. Uh, it's going to be a little later than usual, but not as late as it has been. We'll have it for you here at ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So uh, before she goes... More good news coming Marshall softball and Allie Harrell's way. She was named to the 2022 Senior Class Award. She is a winner in the NCAA Division I softball. She is the first Marshall student athlete to be honored with this award. It is a big deal. Uh, the acronym stands for Celebrating Loyalty and Achievement for Staying in School. It's chosen by a vote of Division I softball coaches, national softball media, and fans. It is given annually to the most outstanding senior or graduate level student athlete in Division I softball. She is the first student athlete from Marshall University to win the Senior Class Award. She leaves with 220 games under her belt, 215 starts, a 390 batting average, which is fifth all time, 222 hits, which is eighth, by the way, 141 runs scored, which is sixth, 47 doubles, that's third. Uh, 53 home runs, third, 171 RBI, tied for second, 175 walks, which is first because nobody wanted, to, wanted her to swing, and 52 hits by pitches, which is second. By the way, her slugging percentage was 752, that's fourth, and an all-time best, 562 on base percentage. Should I go on? First team all-conference USA selection. NFCA All Mid East Region honoree, third player in history, team history to reach base in 200 games, and uh, that was all 90.9 percent of her games played. That's 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 all. It's like she she reached base nine out of ten, over nine out of ten times, nine out of ten. That's okay. That's not terrible. That is not terrible by any stretch of the imagination. So uh, hopefully we can have uh, here in the future uh, Megan Smith Lyon on the program. You'll get her on and uh, looking forward to that. Uh, you know, we've been keeping up with um, the trials and tribulations of major college football with Jimbo Fisher and Nick Saban. Of course, uh, Jimbo representing Texas A&M, Nick representing Alabama. You know, they actually uh, spoke before this week's SEC spring meetings, and apparently they've set aside their differences after their little little spat. Is that what we're going to call Is that what we're calling it? Spat? Uh, Fisher said today, it's over with. We're done talking about it. We're moving on. And they're moving on to try and fix the problems, he said. Moving on to try to fix the problems of what we have in college football. There are a lot more pressing needs than our arguments. You held a press conference, dude. I mean, seriously, you called a press conference. More pressing needs, sure, but you called a press conference. You woke up your SID and said, get me a press conference. Okay. All right. NBA playoffs coming up tomorrow. We'll talk about that then. Hopefully uh, we'll have some good news from the Eastern Conference Finals of the uh, Stanley Cup, the Eastern Conference Final. I'm excited. A little playoff hockey uh, in the greatest sports arena in the world, Madison Square Garden. And, of course, uh, we got Pirates baseball coming up tonight here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Our producer, Christian Palmer. I'm Paul Swan. If you missed any part of today's show, you want to go back and get it, there's a great way to do it. Become a follower on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. It hits subscribe, but you're a follower. Because if I say subscribe, again, my dentist thinks I'm asking for money. And I'm asking him for money. Everybody else is free. So hit follow, and you can get the program anytime uh, it's available, delivered to you. That does it for this edition here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Well, night, everyone. WRBC Huntington, W231BS Huntington, broadcasting from the Oscars Breakfast Burgers and Brew Studios. This is ESPN 94.1 and AM 930.
West Virginia Metro News, I'm Alex Thomas. West Virginia officials launching a new dashboard showing the status of the state's foster care system. The online portal showing data on the more than 